Hi, it's Graham from Buddy Boss, and in this video, we're going to take my demo site here, the Buddy Boss Academy, and we're going to turn it into a fully functioning Buddy Boss app. I'm going to take you through connecting, configuring, and building the app. We're going to talk through branding, all the features of the Buddy Boss app, and by the end of this video, you should have an app which is ready to be built and sent off to the build servers here at Buddy Boss. And to top it all off, my aim is by the end of this video to have it done within the hour. So we have a lot to get done. If you're ready to join me, let's begin. Now the first thing we are going to need to do is we're going to need to install the Buddy Boss app plugin. So this will be done on your dashboard. You're going to go to Plugins, Add New. And you can see I've already got the plugin here installed, but you'd go to Add New, then Upload Plugin. You'd then upload your plugin here. You can get your download from buddyboss.com. Once you sign in, you'll go to your download section and you'll have an option to download on the right hand side. Please note, you will have access to download multiple revisions. It's highly recommended you always get the latest version unless there's a conflict or a reason why you need to downgrade. With that downloaded, you're going to upload it into this file. You're going to install it and you will activate it which will now give you access on the left hand side menu here to the Buddy Boss app. Now along this menu we're going to actually start at the bottom. We're going to connect first of all and configure the build. So that means configuring your Apple and Android accounts as well as Firebase which is used for push notifications. Then after that we're going to go back up to the top and start working through the branding and the feature set. So let's start with connect here and the first thing we need to do is submit our app ID and key. So if we go to buddyboss.com, down to our subscriptions and then apps, and we should see our app subscriptions here. If we click manage, we have our app ID and our app key. I'm just gonna copy that now. If you do have access to the developer section, you will notice here below that will be your GitHub or GitLab repository information. Again, that is already covered in another video, but it's just to highlight it's available here. And once we connect our app, we will see that the primary site will be listed here. And if you have any secondary sites, which are used for staging or development, they will also be listed below. So let's just paste that information and connect. Now with this connected as the primary site, we can proceed to the next step. If you are connecting this as a secondary site, you will not be able to configure or build a secondary site. All of this is managed on the primary site alone. So the primary site handles all the building, but once you have the app, you can switch to secondary sites to test and, and try out any staging or development environments. Let's move along now to configure and start getting through this configuration section. First thing we need to do is to add our name of the app. So we're gonna call this the Buddy Boss Academy. We're going to click Save. The section below that is for minimum build versions. This means if you have an app already on the store, you can set a minimum version required. And if a user opens an old version, you'll get a pop up to say, please update the app. And that's something that will obviously be addressed once you've already got the app on the app stores. So let's go now to iOS settings and we will configure our Apple developer account. The first thing we need to do is connect the Buddy Boss plugin to the Apple developer account, and this is through an API key. We're looking for a P8 file, an issuer ID, and a key ID. If we go along to uh, developer.apple.com now, I have already signed in, and we go to account on the top right. And then on the left, we're looking for App Store Connect. The App Store Connect is where you're going through to publish your app. You also do your, all your store information as well as see your analytics and your sales. It's also an area where we can handle the users and access, which is where we'll start with now. Along the top, there is the tab for keys. If this is missing, it means you're not logged in under the administrator access. It is an admin only feature. And we can see we are on the service store connect API section here. So we're gonna to go to create a new one next to active. We're going to name this 
our project name, so Buddy Boss Academy, and we need to choose at least App Manager just to get the permissions we need. And now you can see we have our API here. We need to download the API key. It's really important to note there's no option to download the previous keys. This is because they've been downloaded once before and you do not get a second option to download these. Please make sure you look after these and put them somewhere safe. If you lose this information, you may have to recreate the API keys, but in some events you may not be able to update your app without them. This is really important also when we discuss some of the Android certificates as well. So I have this downloaded now, and because of what I just said, let me just bring open my folder structure here. We have a folder inside, I've got Apple, Google, Firebase, and it's also got my branding assets in there. And we're gonna take this file, which we've just downloaded from Apple, we're gonna put it in the Apple file here, and we're actually gonna rename this. I'm gonna call it our App Store Connect API key. We're going to have another P8 file later on, so this way it helps me distinguish between the difference, and it also means I know what this is later down the line if I ever require rebuilding this. Now we are going to take the issuer ID, and we're going to copy that now, and we'll go back to our site. Under issuer ID, we're going to paste this. Under API key, we're going to drop in our download. Apple, App Store Connect. And the last thing we need now is to go get our key ID. Go back to the App Store, and the key ID is under the API information. We can paste that, and then we can connect. With that connection now completed, we can go along and sort out the identifiers, or bundle IDs. So this is the name of our apps, and we need to go to the developer.apple.com site again. We go to account, and on the left-hand side now, and rather than clicking App Store Connect, we're actually going to click, click Certificates, IDs, and Profiles. From this window, we're looking at the identifiers. And as I said before, this is the name of your app in kind of the command name. No apps on the store have the exact same name. So this is something that has to be completely unique. And as you can see here, it's recommended by Apple and Android to do this in a reverse domain name convention make sure that things are unique. So we're gonna create a new one now. It's an app ID, so we click continue. It's an app, we click continue again. I'm gonna put a description in for reference. So we're gonna do is Buddy Boss Academy, and I'm gonna call this the release version, because we have to do two, one for our test app and one for our live one, which is the release. And we're gonna call this com.buddybossacademy.apple. And then the last thing we need to do is scroll down to push notifications and enable this. If you do try push notification and they do not go through to your app, it's worth just checking these. You can update them again if you have skipped this step. So let's register. And we're gonna do the same again, but we're gonna do this for our test one. So we're gonna go app ID, app buddy boss academy test. And again, I'm going to be consistent, so I'm going to call this com.buddybossacademy.apple, and then I'm going to put .test at the end. Once again, I'm going to go down to the push notifications, tick that, click continue, and register. So as you can see here, we do have our two academy tests here, the, uh, or the test and the release version for our identifiers. So we're going to go back to our site, we're going to refresh our bundle IDs, and that should now pick up the latest information. Select the bundle ID, and now we can see we're looking for our release version, which is uh, Apple. Apple, here we go, and we now need the Apple test version. There we go. So our bundle IDs now have been confirmed. We're going to scroll down again and click save again. And with those selected, we now need to create these certificates against our bundle IDs. Fortunately, BuddyBoss have made this super simple. We just need to tick automatically generate certificates and that will create these on our behalf. So we're gonna tick that and click save. And as you'll see, we now have 
a certificate, an ID and a password, and another certificate and password for the test app. We also need to create provisioning profiles, and again, we can just tick that and click Save Changes. So as you can see, scrolling down to the bottom here, we now have two provisioning profiles. What this is actually doing, if we go to our Apple developer account, we can see under certificates, we now have one for development and one for release. Uh, under our profiles, we now have, again, one for the App Store and one for development. This has to be done from a Mac. So for any of you PC users out there, this is making things a lot simpler. So with that bit connected, the last thing we're going to do here is we're going to set up our app information. A lot of people will do this afterwards, but we're just going to do this while we're here. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to developer.apple.com again, go to the account. We now need to actually create a draft app. So let's go to our App Store Connect. We're going to create a new app. So under My Apps, I'm going to create a new one. We're now going to call this our app name. And this is part of the, the publishing process. So you actually need to do this when you do your publishing anyway. Just choose our language. We can choose any school we like. Bundle ID, we need to select our released version. So that's our released one here. And uh, we can give full access. Yep. There we go. Okay, so that has been done. We can just refresh that and information should be here. Perfect. Now inside this app here, if we go down to app information, we can grab our Apple ID. So let's just copy that and put this in here. Now this information, what it's used, is used to fill in the smart banner and the radius app. So if we have a smart banner and someone's on their mobile phone browsing your site, it will come up with a banner saying download the app today. And so we need an app ID to send them to, so it takes them to the right place in the store, which is why we need to create this app already here. And it's the same thing for in-app purchases. If we go to manage here, we can create a shared key. So at specific shared secret, generate it, and we can copy that now and paste that there. As I say, a lot of people will do this afterwards. Of course, we're doing an app in one run now. So for me, it makes sense to get this included. If we go back to App Store, this is basically the start of submitting an app yourself, including adding all of the information, all of the description, the screenshots, and all the prices, etc. Everything happens here. But that is for another video for sure. Let's go back to our site here and we can see we have completed this section now. So we've added two identifiers. We've created our signing certificates and our provisioning profiles. In addition to that, we have added our app information for when we get to look at Smart Banner and the Rate This app. The next thing we need to do is we need to add our device to our Apple developer account. So if we go to the top to iOS devices, and we will now add our device to this account. Now for most of you, this will be absolutely empty. Of course, we already have some existing apps here. So what I will do is I will start with adding my device. So we click add new device. I'm gonna call this our device name. Again, this is for reference so that you know what device this is if you ever need to remove it. And now you can see there's a QR code section here. If I open my app, and let's just bring this up, take our phone over and scan the QR code. What we can see is this opens a page up in Safari where we now need to allow a configuration profile. So we click allow. This is now downloaded. So we're just gonna to go to our settings page. Under the profile downloaded, which is the second box there, we click that. We're now gonna click install and we're gonna put in our pin code. And at that point we're installing. What we're going to do, what this is actually doing is adding our unique device identifier here and putting it automatically to the Apple developer portal for you without you having to get the information yourself. So we just install this. And what will happen once this has been done is it will take you to a page, as you can see there, your device UDID 
is registered successfully with your app. And if we were to refresh this page, you will see the devices are there. This top one is the device in question. So while the name hasn't changed, this is my device right in front of me. That is essentially the iOS settings complete. We now have gone through the configuration for Apple. Now let's take a look at the Android side. And from here, the first thing we need to do is connect our plugin to the Apple developer account. What we're looking to do is create a service account key here. So we do this by going to our developer account. So let's go to play.google.com. And you can see I've just created one here. Once we are in the play console, the first thing we need to do is create an app in draft mode. So we're going to create an app here. We're going to name it our app name. And we're going to select app free. Please be aware if you select free, once you publish it, you cannot change it from free to paid. And we're going to select the terms and conditions and create the app. With that done, we're now in draft mode. We can actually switch back to all apps here. And what you'll see, the app here is in draft. Now from this window, we're going to go down on the left hand side into settings, developer account, and then API access. And at this point, we need to create a new project, or if you already have a Google Cloud project account, you can link to an existing one. I don't, so I'm going to click create a new project. And there we have it. We now have a project. It's called the Google Play Console Developer. We already have that already created for us. And what we now need to do is create a service account on this project. We do that by clicking create new service account and it will take us to the Google Cloud Platform. Once the Google Cloud Platform has opened up, you should see at the top your project name. If you do not, you need to click at the top here. You've got recent or you may need to click all and select the project which should line up with what you have already set under your API access here. So this account name here. And then you should be on the I am and admin menu down to a service accounts. You see, we do not have a service account here, so we need only to create one. We need to give it an account name. So I'm going to just call this Buddy Boss Academy. And again, this is mainly for reference and anything else. And under the description, I'm just going to call this Buddy Boss App API. I'm going to create this account. We now need to select a role. And if we go under basic and owner, we can then click continue. The owner gives it full access. And then finally, we don't need to grant any other users access to this service account, so we can just click done. Now we have our service account. What we need is a key, so our API key. We do that by clicking the three dots, manage keys. Then we need to add a key and create one. You can see we have our JSON file. That's what we're looking to get. So we just need to click create and we now have that downloaded. Like before, I am going to now put this in our folder structure to make sure we do not lose this. So let's go to downloads. We're gonna drop this in here and we're gonna drop the file under Google and we're going to call it service account API. Again, just a reference for yourself so that if you come back to this weeks and months down the line, you know what each key was for. We will deal with two more JSON files as well during this project, so it just makes it a little bit easier. With that done, we can now go back to our website. You can upload that JSON file. Let's choose Buddy Boss Academy, Google and Service Account API, and we can connect account. Perfect, we have now connected our account. Let's scroll down to our application ID. Now this is the same kind of concept as Apple's bundle ID or identifiers, we now need to put an application ID in. We can actually type this in manually, so the same process as before, I'm going to do com.buddybossacademy.android. Now there are requirements here, so if we look on this, we should see a four or five criteria fill up. If your app doesn't follow this criteria, it will not be accepted. So we can see that it needs to have at least two segments with the dot. It should have should start with a letter. If there's any X's, essentially you'll need to update this. Now the difference between the Apple and Android is we only put one application ID in here. 
and Buddy Boss automatically gives you a test version for when you need to create the test um, application details. So with that done, we can just move on to our key store information. Now key store is basically a certificate for your app. Whenever you update or change your app, you do need to give them your key store information to prove you are the app owner. If you lose this information, you essentially cannot update your app. So please, once again, make sure everything we download today in this video, you save and keep this safe. Now, what we have within the Buddy Boss app is a generated key store tool. So we're going to start with that and it will enable us to complete this information. If you already have an Android app and you're looking to replace it with a Buddy Boss app, you should have this information already available to you, which you can manually complete and save. But for us, since this is a new app, we're going to generate key store. On here, we're going to need to put a password and alias. This can be completed automatically for you if you just leave it blank. So all we need to do is put at least our first and last name in. But if you are a business, you'd like to complete the rest of this information. So I'm going to put my name in here and I'm going to put this Buddy Boss Academy. And we're just going to click generate. We'll now be told to download this file and again we will have an important tick box to say that we will not be able to download this certificate again so please keep this safe and with that downloaded once again I'm going to move this into my Google folder and I'm actually just going to rename this to key store if we go back to our configuration page now we can import it we can choose the file key store and then save and what will happen it will automatically fill in the fields so we scroll down you can see it's already got our JKS file which is our key store file along with the passwords and the alias name all from this tool that is the Android settings all complete the last part of the configuration now is to move on to the Google Firebase which is required whether you're using Google Android apps or Apple apps, you will have to complete this section here. It is also required for push notifications. So with that said, let's get on with the last part of our configuration. And the first thing we're going to need is a Firebase server key. And then after that, we're going to be looking for four configuration files, which are four apps essentially. So first of all, let's go to firebase.com. We'll sign in and then we'll go to our console. We need to create a project. So again, you can name your project, but since we've already got a Google Cloud project here, we will pick that up. So we're gonna link that, click continue. It will now, because it's linked to that project, it's going to share the billing information as well as the user information. Um, I'm going to turn off Google Analytics because it's not gonna be required for this project, but you can enable Google Analytics as well. And then this will now create our project. Inside the project are applications. So we will have four applications, two for Apple and two for Android. The most important aspect of this is to make sure we get our identifiers or our bundle IDs correct. So let's click continue. Now we are inside our project on the top left here. If we click the cog, we can go to project settings. And there are two areas we're going to look for here. Under the general tab, we have our applications down here and under our cloud messaging, we have our server key and we also have some push notifications to set up. First of all, let's grab our server key, paste that into our site, click save. Now we're gonna create our four apps. So let's go back to Firebase, let's go to general and we're now going to create two iOS and two Android. So we'll start with iOS need to put in our bundle ID. Now, as I said a moment ago, this needs to be exact. Academy.apple, and I'm just gonna call this Academy iOS release. Actually, I'll just call this iOS release, that'd be fine. And I'm gonna copy that one. We're gonna click register. And then we'll download this file which is a plist file. We will rename this file straight away. Uh, downloads, let's bring this in. So we will download this straight away 
to iOS release. And then we're going to do the same again. So if we press X on the top left, we're going to create a new app by clicking Add App. Another iOS one. We're going to do the same name, but dot test at the front. And we're going to call this iOS test. We're going to register the app and we're going to download the next plist. This is why it's really important to rename them because obviously by now we can have several of them. Uh, let's go to downloads. We're going to call this iOS test. Now before we move them, we're going to do the same for Android and then we can move all four files together. So if we go add app, now we're going to do Android. Going to paste the name in to replace this with Android. Call this Android release. Register the app. And for these files, they will be JSON files. So download again. Call this one Android release. Oh. And we'll do the same again. Don't test at the front. Oh, test. We'll call this Android test. Now Firebase is the push notification tool, so this is why it has to match, otherwise the service here will not be able to link up with your identifiers and send the push notifications. So let's go back to our downloads file, let's go Android. I'm going to take all four of these files, we're going to put them inside our Firebase, oh, our Firebase folder. And we have one more thing we need to do. So with Apple, we need to actually give Firebase permission to send Apple push notifications. So now under cloud messaging at the top there, you'll see there are two apps here, the iOS release and test, and you see it's looking for an auth key. To do this, we're gonna to need to go back to our developer account in Apple. Let's go to developer.apple.com under our account on the left hand side to certificates, IDs, and profiles, and then down to keys. You can only create a couple keys for um, these kind of API access. You can use one key for multiple purposes though. So in this case, we're going to call this Buddy Boss Academy. We're going to tick the APN, which is Apple Push Notification going to register it and once again we're going to download a file which we cannot download a second time so we should keep this one safe and we're going to put this inside Apple and we're going to rename this APN so Apple push notification now while we are here let's close that now close this we are going to copy this key ID we can come and get this afterwards but we're going to copy this now while we're on here click done and we can see here's our key we can click it to get all the information back in again so we have this key ID copied we're going to go over to our Firebase account and now we're going to upload our APN file so if we click to upload we need to put our P8 file in here our APN file we just downloaded so if we go into Apple and we're going to choose the APN one we're going to need to put our key ID in, which is what we just copied off the Apple account. And it's now asking for a team ID, which is the number on the top right of your account. And then we can click upload. At this point, it looks like it's stuck. If you click it a second time, you'll get an error, but it will go through. And we now need to do exactly the same for the iOS test version. So let's go upload. I already have the team ID in my clipboard. Let's at the APN and now let's just go back into my developer account to get the key ID. Click upload twice and there we go so we can see now both our applications on Apple have our key ID and the APN enabled. 
So at this point, we are finished with Firebase. We have our four applications. They have the correct bundle IDs, or as it's called under Android, the app, uh, the package names. And we've also enabled the APN on the Apple projects. Now it's important to note that if this information is incorrect and it does not match what you have on the rest of the configuration, you will get failed errors or push notifications will not work. If that's the case, you will need to click on your projects here or your apps on here. You can remove this app and then recreate it again from start. Let's go back over to our website now and upload these four files. So let's go upload. Looking for the iOS release one. So we're going to go back to our Buddy Boss Academy, Firebase, iOS release. Going to do the same again for iOS test. At this point, I'm going to save it just to make sure this saves nicely. And then I'll do the Android as well. So we can see we have two plist files here, which is great. And we do the Android release and the Android test. Save again. And we now have our two JSON files for the configuration of the Android release apps and the test apps. With the configuration behind us now, let's move on to the real fun stuff. Let's talk about branding. Let's talk about all the features and start building our app. So the first thing we're going to do is go over to settings here. Under general, we've already got registration enabled within our website, but what I have done is I'm going to restrict app access to logged in members only, so that if you're logged out, you will not see the full functionality of the app. Most people won't need to use website authentication, but it's available there if you do need to block website or desktop viewers from accessing your site during development. So I'm going to leave that off. I'm going to move along to feedback now. Okay, we do want a feedback button. We do want a report to bug button in the menu. And we also now want this rate this app on iOS and Android. This feature here required us to create our app on the App Store Connect. So that app in draft mode is required for us to have this because it associates the listing with the feature. So if someone clicks rate this app, it goes to the review section of our app. So let's just save that. Smart banner again, we've already added the information required on the app store stuff, so we're just going to tick these ones. Um, I actually want this smart banner to appear for both logged in and logged out users, so we're going to leave that last piece off. Push notifications we're going to leave as default, everybody should get all the push notifications by default. In app purchases is beyond the scope of this video, however, we do have tutorials at buddybus.com. API caching is just to clear the cache if necessary, so there's no action for us to take here. And API CDN, if you do have a CDN, you should tick this button and add your URL. Now, if you do have a CDN and you notice icons go missing, you may be because you don't have HTTPS enabled on all of your assets. So if you were to remove this and use to double forward slash at the start, that should resolve the issue for you. For this environment, I do not have a CDN applied, so I'm going to leave that off. We're going to now move down to integrations. As I said at the beginning of this video, I do have a LearnDash module set up on this app, so I am going to enable offline courses. If you have Vimeo Pro, you can also add your authentication code so that you can download Vimeo videos, but it does require a pro subscription. Now we're talking about the fun stuff. Let's look at branding. So for this video, I actually spoke to the Done For You team and the design team within there and said, I need some assets for this video. And they've come back to me with some awesome assets and I can't wait to actually see them. So this will be the first time I look at this. So let's go to upload the image. And we'll go to downloads, branding. Okay, so we have, we're looking for the home screen. So home screen logo. Fantastic. Okay, so we have our logo there on the home screen. We have our login screen, so we're looking for the login logo and background. Uh, so login logo. Awesome. And background. Brilliant. Okay, so the first thing you can see here, we're going to need to change the color of that button. And again, that comes down to the next tab along. Let's move along to launch screen. I'm really excited for this. Uh, the launch screen will be the splash. 
Awesome. Love it. Okay, let's add a spinner and we'll make that white. Okay, great. App icons. So app icon here. Very nice, very smart. We'll say I've been very impressed with what the design team have done across the uh, across all of the done for you to project so far. We need the background icon, so that would be BG. Foreground icon. And we can have a look at that on Android. Awesome. And then the last thing we need to do is our notification icon for Android. Well, the design team, you've done an amazing job. That looks absolutely awesome. I can't wait to see this on my phone now. So let's just save these changes. Changes have been saved. The branding has been done. However, as mentioned, we do need to change the colors. I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but I will update some of these color schemes here. So what we're going to do, we're going to change this uh, ascent color to orange. It's not the buddy boss orange, but it is close enough. So let's just change that on all of them. The tab bar, yep, yeah, let's go orange again. Buttons. Okay, so the primary button there and the secondary button. Let's just turn that down a tad. Great. Text colors, again, we're gonna leave these as they are. Now a login button, that's what we need. So we're gonna change that dark button here. Let's just change that to a white. And let's just change the text inside there. Uh, probably two orange. Let's just change that to a, a dark gray. Great. Okay, fantastic. Uh, background color does not apply since we've already got a background, so that's absolutely fine. The Android status bar, again, we must go orange. And then obviously, as we have Learn Dash, we do have courses here. So we have some colors here. You know what, these, these are not too bad. Maybe I'd want to change the in progress one. Let's go to a bit of a blue here. And three, let's go to, um, let's go to, yeah, let's go to a blue as well. Okay, perfect. Let's save these changes. Again, there are tutorials covering this in far more detail. I just want to make sure when we build this app, it does look the part. Typography is definitely going to be beyond this. I haven't got any fonts in mind. Me personally, I'm using the system default fonts, which means if you've got an Android device, you'll pick up the default one, and if iPhone will pick up its own default one. Some Android users like to change the default font, but um, at least this way it's consistent with what they're expecting. So let's just move along to the last part here, which is the tab bar, your menu. So we need to create a menu for the Buddy Boss Academy. With that in mind, it's going to be kind of a focus around the activity, definitely a focus around the courses. So in my mind, what we're going to do, we're going to start off with a home button. So let's go to app pages and home. Okay. Let's change the icon to a home. There we go. I will use the existing color scheme for now. And in addition to that, so let's put the activity, which is a core app page. Let's add the activity here. Then of course we want courses. We're gonna, I've only got one course on this demo site, so we're actually gonna add courses itself. And then I suppose we should really add groups for some interaction. Perfect. So you can have four on here plus the more tab, which is at the second menu. So I'm gonna update this as it is. Uh, I actually like these icons. I'm not fond on this order. So I'm gonna do activity, courses, and then groups, I think. Again, if you do want the text underneath, you can tick that, but I'm gonna take that off. And you can change from outlined or filled icons. So let's update this. And now let's add the more tab for get additional options. So click more and it selects it. So we already have our account options here, but we do need the settings. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add settings. Um, I will keep the icons as they are, but you can change them. And again, you can change the style as well. We're going to keep those as they are. Then after that, we need to look about the profile itself. So we're going to talk about having messages, notifications. And then we really want like the blog and photos would be there. 
So that would kind of be almost my second set and I would have it in that order. After that we do want to then tunnel in on courses because obviously that's a big part of the academy here. So we're going to have these four, all of them. So we're going to have all courses. If you're going to look for specific categories, you're going to look at their my courses, which we're going to rename and then certificates. Just add all those. Again, so we'll do courses, categories. We're going to rename this one to my courses. And then certificates. And then last of all, what we really do need to do is put in a terms and conditions page. So we're actually going to use in this case a WordPress page. If I view all the pages, we're going to put in the sample page. So a sample page is the default WordPress page that demonstrates the theme. So this is going to actually be a non-native page, which means it's going to go back to the web and grab the page. It will be slightly slower and you won't get the API benefits, but I do want to demonstrate it in this video. So we're just going to call this one sample page. I'm going to rename it just you know, terms and conditions, or maybe private privacy policy or something like that. Again, it's more about just demonstrating a fallback because every other page here is all native. Now, if we look on the right hand side to our preview, we can see all of our options are here, but there's quite a lot of gaps and I think we can tidy this up a bit. So let's now add sections. I'm gonna add a section. I'm gonna call this, uh, let's call this app. Update that. So we're gonna put this to the top and we're gonna drag this level one in. And you can now see the menu falls within this section. So we're gonna do the same again. Let's create a new one. And this one can be for your profile. We'll create another one after that for courses. So let's now add profile up here and we put messages, notifications, photos and blog in there. One for courses, the right around. So if we now scroll down on this preview, we have app settings, profile, courses, and then we have our outlier here, which is terms and conditions. So I'm just gonna give another heading And let's just call this extra. Update this. I think that looks awesome. So okay, we've got our menu structure, we've got some nice looking icons. This last page is a page. So it's just showing a default page. And let's see if we've got something relevant we could put into here. Uh, well, it's terms and conditions, let's just put a lock on there. I think that'd probably be a cool one to have for now. Brilliant. Okay, so we are finished here. I'm not going to worry about changing the icon colors. I'm not gonna worry about changing the styling either. Um, I can demonstrate what it looks like here. And then each one of these, you could obviously change the color of. But again, uh, there is a full tutorial on this section. I just wanna make sure that when we build this app, it looks like a full function app as you would like to see on the App Store. Great, so right now we have now configured our branding. The translations are not going to be required, so this would be if we were changing fonts or, sorry, text inside of our, our app. So, for example, if we wanted to change the way the phrasing was on a course, maybe instead of course we would study. So our studies, then that would be the translation. So that's not required for us right now. The only thing we do need to do is take a look at app pages so that we can customize our home page, and that way I can also demonstrate to you the page builder. App pages are pages that we build with Gutenberg, but we've made blocks that are specifically designed to work natively. So we have the home page here, and you can create multiple of these pages. So I'm just going to edit the existing one we have. And as you'll see right now, we just have the notifications on this page. So when someone opens up the app, the first bit on the bottom is home, and this is what they'll see. So let's tidy this up a little bit and, and show you some of the features. I'm going to enable this sidebar here. And first thing, I'm going to delete notifications because I'm pretty certain my demo site will not have any notifications available. I'm going to click the plus here. Um, and first of all, I'm going to add a video. So we're going to do a video on Vimeo. And I have a URL to embed. 
fantastic after that what we're going to do is we're going to look at the activity now rather than searching let me just demonstrate on the side here these are all the blocks that we have built to render with react native so these are basically native to the phone it means they will pick up api caching and will be faster to load rather than having to load in a web fallback page which gives you more compatibility but will be slower so let's now take a look and we're going to scroll down to the bottom to buddy boss app blocks so we're going to add activity here rather than doing notifications i'm going to change the title of this to latest activity i'm going to show five five posts that's good and then let's click plus again now let's look at courses because obviously we want to demonstrate the courses we'll name this the, the academy and let's actually add a background on this one so we're going to go with a, a light gray just something to break up the app a bit that's perfect so they're going to come onto the app they're going to see a video welcome them there's some latest activity and then there's latest apps uh, latest courses and we can see we're looking at dynamic courses you could say to select a specific course if you wanted to push a specific course that's a good way to start i mean i suppose last of all let's just add something else in here not going to worry about text let's add a group so obviously we can get people to join the discussion here great groups here and we're right community discussions awesome and then we will select the groups so let's talk about support discuss the platform favorite integrations showcase that would be perfect so now we've selected some groups to demonstrate here and that's an example of an app page again you could create a page here with just text and images so for example you could do a text and an image you could even add galleries on there and this would be rendered completely natively but of course the power of wordpress means that some people will feel that they still want to use elementor or normal blocks which is absolutely fine it just means it would render in a web fallback we're going to update this page right now and that is the end of our building the things we haven't discussed is push notifications this will get discussed after you actually build the app and of course in app purchases we have a huge video based on this and the configuration is way beyond the scope of the video so our last thing to do is to build our app and build our test app so let's go request a build here we're going to select ios and android and we're going to select test app and go to next step we're on step one where we're selecting what we're going to build step two will run through some checks if we've missed anything at this point we will be flagged to say it needs to be completed but right now this looks good so we can see all the information of our app that's configured all of our certificate information both for ios here and android below that all of this looks great so we now need to click send build request and that is it right now our code from our wordpress plugin has been sent up to the build servers with buddy boss we are now using you know a linux machine or a mac and we are compiling your code building all your preferences and going to send back a completed app to you now if we go into build history we will see an example here we, these are the two we've just sent so we have an ios and an android one this is a completed version that I finished earlier today just to demonstrate what it looks like when it's finished. Once you have a build completed, it will flag saying completed and it will give you a test link here. If it has failed, it will say failed and upon clicking that, you will learn what has been missing or what has gone wrong. For example, if you have forgotten to add push notifications, we will only know that when we build your app. So if you do have a failed issue, please take, take a look at what the error is and any problems reach out to support. I'm going to come back in about 25 minutes to take a look at these completed apps and I will bring them back to you on my phone. Okay, super exciting moment now. Let's refresh this page. It's been just over 20 minutes, 25 minutes around about time. And yes, okay, both these apps have completed and they've completed successfully. 
what we're going to do now, we're actually going to install this app. I believe we're still well under the hour time frame it's taken to even configure it. So we're going to install the app and take a look at our final product. And I'm so excited to see this. So what we now need to do is we click the install button and we will have a QR code here. So let's just get the phone ready and open up the camera. So we're going to scan that. Let's open up that page now. And at this point, what we're expecting to see, as we can there, at the icon of our app, and we can see the Buddy Boss test here at the top there. Now, obviously, this is only for testing, so you had to have your device ID added under the Apple section for this to work. If you just try and send this link to anybody, it will not install on their devices. But when you actually create a release version and go through the App Store, you won't have to worry about this page at all. So let's now click install application. We should now expect a pop-up to appear. Yes, perfect. And we're going to click install. If that pop-up doesn't appear, you can scroll down and there are some helpful options there and you can read through them piece by piece. But let's now close this, go to my next page and you can see the app is now installing. We're already more than halfway. The moment is here, it is already installed. So let's open this. Wow, that looks incredible. And we're at the login page already, so let's log in here. Okay, logging in. Paste. Done. Okay, we're going to log in. And there we are. We can see we have that video there at the top. We can press play, and that's going to come through. Be careful not to play too loudly. Yeah, perfect. Let's pause that. We've got our latest activity. Scroll down. We've got our course there and we've got some latest discussions. We can slide left and right. Let's go along the bottom here. We've got our news feed. Great stuff. And again, we can click a new post if we'd like to create a new post. Got our courses on the bottom. And again, we've got one course. If I click in that course here, there's the header and the preview video along with the two courses and if we click overview let's just take a look at one of them great so Tom's video is in there so this looks amazing this is absolutely incredible and we have our groups let's just join a group and feed Okay, so there's nothing in that one typically, but that's working lovely. And you can see there's a request to join button because I'm not a member. Going on to the more tab here, we can actually see our menu looks really lovely. If I click terms and conditions, as I wanted to show a web fallback, click that. We see a spinner at the bottom. It means it's loading the web page. And here is our page off the web. So this is just a WordPress page. Um, as you can see at the bottom, as a new WordPress user, you can go to your dashboard. Uh, this is just the default WordPress page. You can see how it looks. What happens with web fallbacks is we take out the header and the footer. So it does feel like it's part of the app. The only real difference, as I say, it's slightly slower. And if we lost the internet connection, this page would not load. And that's really what we notice as a difference. But beyond that, it looks absolutely incredible and gives you a lot of flexibility there. Let's just take a look at the blog. Great, so we do have a couple of articles here and the images are loading up. Wow, this does look great. We can see all our push notifications, we can see our email preferences. I think I'd probably change that color personally. But at the bottom here, we can see send us feedback. So this was a feature we just enabled. And obviously report bug the same and rate this app and you can see there's a link button there so if i click it it's probably going to fail at this point there we go because the app's not available but this was linking to our app so that we could leave a review in app well there we go we have an app right now that we built basically off of our platform of the default demo content in less than an hour We've published it to our phone. We could invite a few more people by adding their devices to it or give them the Android test app now. And you could have a few people on here testing this app and playing around with it today. And look at that header. If we swipe down, the heading just looks 
looks incredible. I love it. I'm really chuffed with it. I hope this video has helped you. If you do have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below and we'll respond to you as quickly as possible. Of course, this was a real quick run through, you know, in less than an hour to build an app from nothing. But don't forget, we have a full breakdown of all of our tutorials on the Buddy Boss website, along with written tutorials as well. And of course, we do have a 24 seven support team who are there to help you, whether it is platform, theme or app related. And of course, if you have not purchased your Buddy Boss app yet, go along to buddyboss.com forward slash app We've just opened up our next wave of app customers, so you can definitely get involved in the next batch of sales. And I hope to see you soon on the next video.